welcome to the HTO channel. We just want to take an opportunity today to just encourage you. Um, all of us need encouragement every once in a while. So this is not a Bible study instructional video. Um, for that, I would encourage you to check out the channel. Um, there are some videos that have already been posted. And if you haven't had an opportunity yet to look at the, the video on John chapter 21, I'd advise if you haven't, you could do it afterwards, but it probably will give you a better framework um, before you view this video. But nevertheless, we can keep going. Um, again, today is just an opportunity just to um, use the word of God so that we can encourage ourselves in the Lord. So I don't know about you, I definitely need encouragement and I hope that you do too. And even if you don't, maybe you know someone who does. So we're gonna just go ahead and get this party started. Let's just start first. Um, we're gonna look at a word. We're actually gonna take a moment and just have honor God with prayer first. You know, we have to start everything off with him um, and just knowing that he does all things well. And so right now, if you'll just join me, there's power and agreement. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, God. I thank you for those who you have led to this channel. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we are all encouraged, God. We need encouragement. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit there is to, there to comfort us and to guide us and lead us and give us peace, the shalom of God. So I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus, anybody under the sound of my voice who's in need of some encouragement, God, we pray that by your spirit and by your word, you lift every, my brother, my sister up during this time. And so we just thank you. We know that you do all things well, Father. For these things, we agree and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, um, you know, with that, we just want to go ahead and look at one of my favorite translations. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but you can go to BibleGateway.com and it's called the Passion Translation. Um, so if you have the King James or another version, you should be able to follow along. But I'll tell you that Passion Translation is something else. So get pause, your, pause the video if you need to, grab your Bible, whatever you need to use. Um, and you can just follow along with me. So we are going to start out. We're going to focus on that theme. And I think it's in King James Version, but it says that love covers a multitude of sins. I don't know if you need that, but I do daily. I thank God for his daily grace, for his daily mercy, um, that if it weren't for him, you know, I love when you think about the Ark of the Covenant, it says that his presence would dwell over the mercy seat. And so with that in mind, let us re be reminded, think of that, the seat, the seat that covered the ark. Lover, love covers a multitude of sin. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the apostle or disciple Peter. You know, everybody, I think Peter gets a bad rap every once in a while, but it's just important to know that Peter is gone through what we call, what I call the restoration of the relationship. And so if you're like me, there are times in our lives that we need relationships to be restored. If you are under the sound of my voice and then you might feel like, hey, you know, feel a little strange from God. Remember, he has never left you. He will never forsake you. But sometimes we just be, need to be reminded of how good God is and how much love he has for us. Or if it's not your vertical relationship, relationship. It's your horizontal. Sometimes we have some horizontal relationships that we need to be cleaned up, knowing that God is able to do exceedingly and above, abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So if you have some relationship issues with your co-workers, employees, children, grandchildren, cousins, brothers, sisters, God is in the, rest, in the, in the business of restoring relationships. And so let's just talk about Peter for a minute. If if you remember in the Bible that it says that Jesus turned him and said, Peter, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times, homie. Right. And so we know that Peter went through it all. The disciples saw them, saw Jesus Christ twice. 
right? When they he appeared in the midst of them. Um, but this time they are on the Sea of Tiberias, if you looked at John 21. And one thing I love about that is that I noted that Christ was already cooking breakfast. Breakfast was already prepared and they're out fishing for fish, right? So that's something right there. I hear a friend of mine saying it in my head. You know what? That'll preach. But nevertheless, look at the restoration of Peter. Peter is denied Christ. First, he, he, he says that I'm never going to deny you. Then he denies him, right? And so you could imagine how he's feeling. So they get out the boat. They recognize that it's Jesus Christ. They come over. He's got fish and bread on the fire. And he turns to him and he says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he says, well, feed my lambs. And then he asked him again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, well, God, you know all things. Yes, I love you. He said, well, shepherd my sheep. And then he says him a third time, says to him a third time, Peter, do you love me? And, he's, and it says in some of the translations, he was hurt. Peter was hurt, right? And so at that point, we're looking at a relationship that is being restored. I almost pause to say restored because Christ never left Peter. He never would forsake Peter. Peter, just like he will never leave nor forsake you. But we just have to be reminded that God is in relationships. And so just like he restored Peter through grace and through mercy, God will restore you through grace and through mercy and through your relationships. Now, sometimes we have to be like Christ and extend that same grace and mercy that he extended to Peter. That's what we, we find ourselves in that place. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and I want you to take a look at who wrote this actual next chapter. We're going to look at 1 Peter 4 and we're going to start with 7. Guess what? Written by Peter. So Peter has already gone through, relationship has been restored. And so he tells him, feed my sheep and look at Peter. So read along with me. Again, this is the Passion Translation, starting with verse 7. Since we are approaching the end of all things, be intentional, purposeful, and self-controlled so that you can be given to prayer. Above all, constantly echo God's intense love for one another, for love will be a canopy over a multitude of sins. That's that verse. Be compassionate to foreigners without complaining. Every believer has received grace gifts, so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many, many colored tapestry of God's grace. One verse says the manifold grace of God. So for example, if you have a speaking gift, speak as though God were speaking his words to you. If you have the gift of serving, do it passionately with the strength God gives to you. And everything, God alone will be glorified through Jesus Christ. For to him belong the power and the glory forever throughout all ages. Amen. And let's continue on. Beloved friends, if, excuse me, if life gets extremely difficult, with many tasks, don't be bewildered as though something strange were overwhelming you. Instead, continue to rejoice for you in a measure have shared in the sufferings of the anointed one so that you can share in the revelation of his glory and celebrate with even greater gladness. If you are insulted, because of the name of Christ, you are greatly blessed because the spirit of glory and power who is the spirit of God rests upon you. Let none of you merit suffering as a murderer or a thief or a criminal or as one who meddles in the affairs of others. If you suffer for being a Christian, don't consider it a disgrace, but a privilege. Glorify God right here because you carry the anointed one's name. I'm going to read that again because you carry. I carry, we carry the anointed one's name. Let's finish this up. For this, for the time is right for judgment to begin in God's own household. And if it starts with us, what will be the fate of those who refuse to obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous are barely saved, what will become of the wicked and the godless? So then those who suffer for following God's will should enfold their lives into the creator. I got to say that again, enfold our lives into the creator who will never fail them and continue to always do what is right. 
So with that, think about that again. First Peter, he wrote this because the relationship has been restored. God is in the business of restoring relationships. And so ask him, go to the father if you have a strained relationship in any of those areas. Ask him and he will restore you. But he may give you some instructions. He may say, hey, extend grace and mercy to that person. Hey, you might you need to forgive that individual. Work some things out emotionally so that there is not a barrier in your relationship. And so I hope and pray that you are just encouraged by this. Again, there won't be a time where there, this is a time where we might not necessarily study in, in, in depth, but we just look at the biblical event, the biblical relationships, the biblical accounts. God is in relationships and the restoration of relationships. Our biggest thing is what we need to do is figure out how to, keep obstacles out of our relationships. And sometimes it's not our own fault. Sometimes it's the other person and then all you can do is pray at that point. But I pray you have been encouraged by this. I pray that you feel lifted, your spirit is lifted. Um, you know that God does all things well and that he will le never leave you nor forsake you. So be encouraged today. I pray that you were biblically encouraged today. Know that he is the lifter of your head. Just receive it. Walk in it. Don't faint while you are doing well. The, the race, remember, is not given to those who run the fastest, but those who endure. So be blessed. God bless you. And again, thank you for coming by. Hit that notification bell. Hit subscribe. Spread the word. Be a disciple. You are an HTO. Disciple others. So be blessed. Thank you for coming by. Amen.